Good morning. Welcome back. We are studying 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 11 to 14 today. We'll read it, then we'll think about it together. So the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were in Nob, and they all came to the king. And Saul said, Here now, O son of Ahitub. He answered, Here I am, my lord. Then Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me, you and the sons of Jesse, in that you have given him bread and a sword, and have inquired of God for him, that he should rise up against me to lie in wait as it is this day? So Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who among all your servants is as faithful as David, who is the king's son-in-law, who goes at your bidding, and is honorable in your house? Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Far be it from me. Let not the king impute anything to his servant or to any in the house of my father, for your servant knew nothing of all this, little or much. David is fleeing for his life. Saul's determined to kill him. He wants to murder him. He's he's jealous of David. He's very he's fearful that David will become king. The spirit of God has left Saul. Uh, Saul is relentlessly pursuing David. David decided finally he had to leave, and he went to the priests, and he recovered there the sword of Goliath. And at that time, Doeg the Edomite was there. He saw that, and he came back and he reported that to Saul. Saul is behaving petulantly. He's he's kind of filled with paranoia. Everybody's out to get me. Why doesn't anybody want to help me? It's reported to him that David went to the priest, and so now he's called the priests, and here they all are. They report to him. They come to him, and, and they deny they have any collusion with David, which is true. We know from reading the story that David, uh, that Ahitub was, was fearful when David came, uh, people knew there was some friction there between Saul and David. Now, the king is being totally wild, and he accuses him. And we'll see tomorrow morning, we'll we'll see what happens next. He's not mentally well. He is accusing, throwing these random, these, these, these accusations at the priests. Sometimes, uh, to apply this to us, to our experience, have you ever been accused, falsely accused, something, you know, you supposedly were invested in some kind of a, a crazy conspiracy or some kind of a, a, a activity to do something against somebody else or some other group or against the church or something, and you, you were not doing anything against the church, you were not undermining a particular leader, none of that was going on, and yet you are accused. Well, if you hang around long enough in this poor world, you'll probably be accused, whether it's in a civil way or even within a church structure. Uh, they come before him faithfully. There they all are. There's there's 80 more or more of them here. And they're simply denying they had anything, which is all they can do. What, can, what else can they say? They didn't have any plot with David. And so sometimes you will be falsely accused in this world. Well, what of it? Plan on it. Just plan on it. There are going to be times when you are mistreated, you are claimed to have done something you didn't do. What you need to do then is be honest. You seek the Lord. You make sure there's nothing between yourself and your Savior. And you uh, do your best to be honest with people. When you have leaders and you have all this authority vested in one party, that's a very dangerous thing. And that's why we tend to prefer uh, committees or councils or delegates voting in a, in a big session we like those kind of things. We call it usually in the church a general conference session or something like that. That is a safeguard that, you know, in the, in, in the minds of many and in the hearts of many persons who are having a spiritual preparation before the Lord, there is wisdom and guidance and safety. So we look, we look to and we trust in the spiritual experience of the broader group rather than in one individual. Here you're going to have a king. God said, you don't, you don't want a king, but they wanted a king. And now we're going to begin to see some of the uh, more and more of the negative fruits of having all this authority vested in one individual. This is not God's best plan, but here it is. And we're going to see what happens from it. Bad things are going to come from this. Uh, the priest, all he can do is be honest here about what they did or didn't know. And I think he's trying to be honest about that. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are glad that you are ultimate, the ultimate judge. You are on your throne at all the time. Uh, if things are come against us that are untrue or unfair or that are misconstrued or that people think evil of us when they should think well of us, Lord, we know that ultimately we can trust you. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So God be with you in all of your challenges, even if you are falsely accused before the government or the brethren. The Lord loves those that are seeking to do right. 